So today, Petr Cech said, after 20 years as a professional footballer, I have won absolutely everything that I could have won. So I've decided to retire at the end of the season. Liam, there's not many that can say that, there's is there? There's not many, <laughs> me definitely not. No, he's, you know, he's been an outstanding goalkeeper. I think he's been a, a fantastic role model as well as a professional. And I think he deserves a, not a send-off as such, but he deserves the respect and, and adulations that will come his way in, in the last, last four or five months of his career. I mean, let's just go through this. One Champions League, four Premier Leagues, four FA Cups, three League and one Europa League. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Not he bad must have a big cabinet in his lounge. Yeah, he needs one. He needs one. But no, he's been he's been outstanding. And um, you know, I remember when Mourinho first signed him, and everyone was like, "Who's who's this guy?" And after f four or five games, everyone knew who 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 Petr Cech was. And his career. Look at that clean sheet record out of the games he's mm. played. That's absolutely incredible. You know, and that's no coincidence. He, yes, he's played in front of uh, sorry, in front of behind outstanding yeah. defenses and teams, but. That clean sheet record is absolutely incredible and he'll, he'll be remembered as a top, top goalkeeper in, in, the, in the Premier League. Most ever in the Premier League. Stuart, what made him, I mean, he's still playing, you know, why is he such a top goalkeeper? I think it's stature straight away. You know, he's got presence in the goal for a start. I, I think he's got composure. He's got, uh, there's no panic in his play. You look at him and you think he's in full control of everything that goes yeah. on around his box. He's obviously very agile. Um, we were, when I was at Manchester City coaching in the early thousands and um, I think Wren wanted two million quid for him, you know, and when you look and you see what he's gone on, f on to and he ended up going to Chelsea that summer, incredible. But I, I think he's got everything a goalkeeper, a modern day goalkeeper mm. needs. He's got stature, agility, presence, he, he's got a bit of everything, you know. I mean, he's a hugely intelligent guy. The other thing as well, unlike a lot of goalkeepers, He's not shouty or angry at all, is he? I think that helps. Very, as you just said, yeah. very, very calm. He's a dream. I'd love to have played in front of him because he's a dream. I was fortunate enough to play in front of Edwin van der Sar and, and when people ask me about playing in front of Edwin, the first thing I experienced, nothing technical, is personality. You know, he's always in control, always calm, and Petr seems to have the same type, he was the similar type of goalkeepers in terms of their temperament. And I think temperament's a huge part of goalkeeping. And, you, you see the saves he makes. He's not like a De Gea that makes absolutely incredible, world-class saves. Like he, he has done, obviously, in his career. But every save, his athleticism seems to be... He's always in control of a situation. And I think that is his, was his biggest attribute in terms of goalkeeping. I think he's, he's been one of the world's best goalkeepers for, for a long time. I mean, people forget, not only did he make two saves in the penalty shootout when they won the Champions League, he also saved the penalty in extra time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, his CV is incredible. You look beyond his club record, 120 odd caps for his country as well. Mm. Takes some doing, you know, yeah. commitment. And he's one of the, he, he's a modern day low maintenance professional. Mm. You never hear scandal around him. He goes about his work quietly but effectively. Came back from a serious injury, which, you know, the depressed fracture of mm. the skull, yeah. which could have ended his career. It certainly could have made. Any professional athlete, I don't think anybody would have looked um, poorly upon somebody and said, look, this is a risk playing with this. Yeah, but I think. No, took, took top medical advice. No, I'm, I think I'm safe enough. I want to mm. crack on. Well, that's bravery, and that's one of the things you look for in a goalkeeper. I remember the, the injury. It was an awful, awful injury. And with injuries, you know, it's bad enough getting injured on your, in your legs or breaking a leg. It takes time to get back into use of getting tackle, making tackles again. Mm. When you're a goalkeeper and it's a head injury as severe as that, to have the mental strength, fortitude and desire to get back, not just get back but play at the level he has done since, he's a, he's a true phenomenon in his, in his, in his goalkeeping profession or whatever you, what you would call it. I think he's absolutely outstanding. And he's had a few detractors recently. And it's so funny. Why when is someone, that? I think... Well, Arsenal weren't going through a good period of form over the last few years, and then you look at, like, OK, who, who can we scapegoat, who can we look at? And it's, goalkeepers always come into that category, and that's the hardest, men, mentally hardest job on the pitch. You make one mistake, you cost your team the game, so it's always easy to look at him, and I just think now he's set, made that statement that he's going to retire at the end of the season, everyone remember all of the positive things that he's brought to our league, which is in numerous things. I mean, in that uh, season, 2004 with Chelsea, he only conceded 15 goals. Mm. That's just it's borderline ridiculous. It is. No matter how good the defence and the team is defending in front of you, there's times where you have to pull that save off. And the fact, Liam mentioned it earlier, he doesn't make these world-class saves. That just tells you his positioning must mm. be so good. It's common sense, you know, it's reading of the game from the back. When, also as well, with, with Petr Cech, you, you look at him and you, you think what he's achieved and what he's achieved as a goalkeeper, 
how much has it got to do with his not, his football intelligence mm. as well, as well as his actual physical mm. ability? I think football intelligence bears out the you know the consistency that you can deliver as a goalkeeper. Mental strength as well has to come into that. Mm. When you're a goalkeeper and you do make an error. And bear in mind, most of these games would be at the top end of the profession when it mm. really counts, when you play for Chelsea, Man United, Liverpool, all the mm. top teams. Those games are high-pressure games. So if you do make a mistake, it's profiled and you've got to deal with it, bury it and move on. And it shows he's got a lot of mental strength behind him. If he's up there with the very best, how many are above him and who, if any, in the Premier League? I think uh, you're looking at... Petacek, Peter Schmeichel, Edwin. Edwin van der Sar was outstanding and I was fortunate enough to play with him. Um, you know, I just think what, what Pet is different is that you have different types of goalkeeper. You look at the Haya now, he was an unbelievable performance at Tottenham, but there's not many like Pet in, in terms of his temperament. You know, look at, look at the list of goalkeepers. There's some outstanding David Seaman, Mark Schwartz, David James. But there was a consistency about the way that Petacek played. You never felt like with some goalkeepers, you felt like there's something something could happen at any yeah, moment. Could be hit he, or miss. Yeah, he was always seemed to be in control, and I think he was a huge part of Chelsea's success in that golden era under Mourinho. Arthur Cox said to me once about goalkeepers. He said, "Never ever forget, it's about keeping clean sheets. You can talk about all the bits and pieces, the bells and whistles, the playing out from the back, the this, the that. That's the stat that counts. Keeping the ball out the net for 90 minutes. He's top of the tree. Tells you everything. How many points do you think?" A good goalkeeper is worth a season. Well, put it this way, I'm associated with Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest would never have won back-to-back -back European Cups without signing the best goalkeeper in the world in Peter Shilton. Mm. You know, mm. uh, Michael. Mm. Would they have won the European Cup without Schmeichel at Manchester United? Yeah. Would Chelsea have won that list of things without Czech? I think it's the most important position on the pitch, personally. I think it's even more important than a striker. Yeah, I agree. I think goalkeeping. I've, we had this debate before about well, goalkeepers is important. Strikes. I think they're more important. I think they, they can win you games on their own. I remember Sch Schmeichel's performance at Newcastle when Manchester United needed to, to win the game and Cantona yeah. scores that mm. volley. But he made save after save after save. It was it, that performance for me as a, as a young child. I'll never forget. But that he got, gave that but that team that belief to go on and win the title that year through his own individual performance. And I think goalkeepers have the ability to do that for their teams. That's why I think after games like Sunday. Uh, just before we move on, for Pochettino, when the opposition goalkeeper is man of the match, it's difficult to criticise your team, isn't well, it? <laughs> it tells you everything. It, it, it just reinforces our mentality that the goalkeeper is the most important mm. position on the pitch. So, for, for Rashford's goal that swung the game in United's favour, the best player on the pitch was the goalkeeper. 